Have you ever dreamt of a magical tool that could easily craft perfect entries for your book Bible? Or, for those of you using Novel Crafter, have you wanted to turbocharge your codex creation so you can get writing sooner? Today is your lucky day. We're embarking on an exciting journey to build a GPT from the ground up, a dedicated AI assistant tailored to transform your intricate story elements into concise, helpful articles. Imagine having a tool that not only preserves the continuity of your series, but also enhances your collaboration with ghostwriters, co-writers, or AI writing assistants like Novel Crafter. Ready to revolutionize the way you organize your story's universe? Let's dive in and create something incredible together. Welcome to Bite Size Booksmith, where technology empowers creativity. I'm Angie, and on this channel, we explore how emerging technologies and AI can enhance our craft and lives as writers. Since OpenAI announced GPTs in early November, I've been on a roll creating several GPTs. These GPTs, or Generative Pre-Trained Transformers, are powerful tools designed to generate human-like text based on the input they receive. They can be incredibly beneficial for tasks like content creation, ideation, and even complex problem solving. As you can imagine, the GPTs that I've created so far have been book related. For instance, there's Authors Web Wordsmith, a website copywriting assistant specifically for authors. Then there's Brenda, the Bookwise Strategist, a marketing consultant GPT for authors specializing in identifying your book's target audience and developing strategies to get your book noticed. I'll include links to both of these GPTs in the video description below for you to try them out. I also have personal GPTs that assist me. Meet Remy, my channel coach, who helps me plan content for this YouTube channel. And then there's the InstaLove Muse, which includes resources from books and classes I've attended to assist in plotting and promoting short romance stories. Now, let's shift gears and begin creating our latest GPT, which we'll call Codex Genie. Okay, folks. So I've come back to the main chat GPT4 page. I believe right at this time that GPTs are only available to those on the pro plan. So if you don't have the pro plan, I don't believe you, that you can use them yet. So let's get started here. If you don't see that there's GPTs over here on the left hand sidebar, there's a couple things you can do. Easiest is going to be to come down here to your name, click, come up to my GPTs. Okay, that takes us back to the page where I was on before where you can see the ones that have made it. I've actually created several more and I went through and deleted them because they weren't really doing what I wanted them to do. But these are my favorite. So we'll come up here to create a GPT. Okay, and this is gonna take us to the configure page. It isn't very easy to do it from here, to create a GPT from here. It's actually gonna be probably a little bit easier for you to come here to the create tab and have a conversation with a GPT builder to create your GPT. So that's actually what we're going to do. So what do you want to make? I want to make a GPT that will assist me in creating book. I really should have written this ahead of time. But this is what my process looks like. So you get to see it live. And creating book Bible entries that an AI writing assistant, and I can't spell, could use to write a fiction story. Okay, let's see what the GPT builder has to say. Okay. So now let's give your GPT a name. They want to call it Story Crafter, but I already came up with Codex Genie. That's a great name. You always want to praise 
the LLM and let it know that it's on the right path. That's a great name. However, I would like to use the name Codex Genie. Spelling is good. Okay, let's see what it has to say. Okay, so it took that and now it is going to create a profile picture for us. Okay, here we go. That's actually a really pretty good picture. I like that. We've got the book. We've got the little genie lamp. Here is an initial profile picture for Codex Genie featuring a mystical genie lamp amidst ancient scrolls capturing a sense of magical wisdom and creativity. I love it. It's fantastic. Okay. Again, praise the LLM. Here we go. Great to hear you love the, the profile pic. It likes to pat itself on the back. First, let's talk about the role and goal. You've mentioned that Codex Genie should assist in creating book Bible entries for fiction stories. To make this even more effective, you could specify the types of stories and genres you're most interested in or any specific elements you'd like Codex Genie to focus on when creating these entries. Okay, so I actually... See if I can do this. Boop. I actually talked to ChatGPT earlier and I set about creating some codex like layouts, things that I wanted it to put in our entries that this is going to be too much information and I'm going to have to tell it that it needs to be to condense it down. But this is a good start, I think. And I can add more later. And you can always use these as well, too, if you're creating your own. So let's go here. Okay, so I've already created how I would like the entries or characters setting and objects. Here we go. Well, let's just enter that and see what it has to say. What it's going to do is it's actually going to save these files. And these are just text files. I took my conversation with ChatGPT and I copied the information for those sections into just a text file, saved it on my computer so I could upload it here. As far as what files it can read, I know it can read text files very well. Uh, I'm pretty sure it can read PDFs. I haven't tried anything else. I've, I've tried to keep it really super simple. Looks like you've provided guidelines for creating characters, settings, and objects in your story. This is, created, uh, this is incredibly helpful for defining how Codex Genie will assist you. Given these templates, Codex Genie will focus on generating entries that align with these structures. Awesome. That's exactly what we want. Next, let's discuss any specific things you'd like to emphasize or avoid in Codex Genie's responses. Any types of content, language, or approaches you'd prefer to steer clear of. Let's see. I can't think of anything that I like you to avoid. However, I would like to keep the story bible entries codex entries what's the word i want to use here it was succinct and to the point i don't want to overwhelm the ai writing assistant with too much information. Okay, let's see what that does. Okay, so now we need to answer 
how do we want Codex Genie to communicate with us? Does it need to be formal or casual and conversational? I am of the mind, I want it to be casual and conversational, but I also want it to ask questions if it has questions. So if something is unclear, I want Codex Genie to ask me questions. So let's try telling it that. Let's keep the conversation casual. And if something is unclear, please ask the author to clarify. Perfect. Okay. So now we can test Codex Genie and see what it does. And we can do that right here. It actually generated some prompts that we can test out. So let's just, just click this, create a character profile for a sci-fi story. Okay, so this is gonna give you a profile from scratch with absolutely no information. Let's test it after it finishes. We'll actually go ahead and save it. And then we will test it with a story idea that we already have and throw that in there. So it is, it's giving some really great information here. It's talking about the background, relationships, what the character looks like, their arc their skills and their abilities, their psychological profile, dialogue style. If the character has specific catchphrases or things that they're known to say, even if they're how they respond to things emotionally. So if they're going to be really angry or maybe if they're going to just turn their back on it and ignore it, these are the kind of things that we can put in there and end up having characters that are very dynamic. Okay. I I'm going to go ahead and save this. Save. I am not apparently set up to be able to share with everyone, but I can generate it with the link and then I can share the link with you guys. Let's go ahead and hit confirm. Okay, awesome. So here we go. We've got Codex Genie. It's now going to be on my screen over here up in the left hand corner. Once I provide you the link, you will be able to access it. And let's add in a story idea. Okay. I hopped off for a moment and I went and I grabbed a story idea from just some random thing I generated a while back. And so let's pop it in here. So we've got hidden lineage. The protagonist dis discovers she is not entirely human. Her ancestry includes a rare line of powerful witches, which explains her attraction to excuse me, to supernatural beings. As she comes under the protection of the vampire king, she begins to unlock her latent magical abilities. And it goes on and on. And then there's a wolf shifter involved. I don't remember what I was thinking that day, but let's create the character or the protagonist. Of this story. We'll put that in the witch in parentheses. A uh, note, I used a, a dinkus. That's what this is called. The three little stars, the three little asterisks, asterisks. Who knows? This is called a dinkus, and that is what we use to separate information and let the LLM know that we are changing and telling it what we want it to do. So let's see what this does. And it's thinking. Okay, let's do it. Okay, 
and it's <laughs> it is not doing what we asked. I think we didn't put enough information in. So I'm going to go ahead. It's not letting me stop. So we're going to give it a second. Apparently we need to be more specific and give it more information. Okay. So let's go back up here and we can actually edit and give it some more information. So her name is Lila Smith. How boring. Her name is Lila Smith. And let's see. And she just turned, let's say 21. Let's see what else we want to say about her. Um, she is a ballet dancer. And just moved into town. Okay. Genre is urban fantasy. That might help us steer the story a little bit uh, in a modern city. And uh, let's see what it does. Okay, now because we gave it some additional information, it was able to give us more back. And we've got likes, dislikes, fears, values, some very vague family background. There we go. Goals and motivations. We've got all kinds of stuff here. It's going to be up to you, it looks like. It's not being, it's being concise in its answers, but it's giving you everything that I asked for. So as we wrap up this exciting journey, I'm thrilled to let you know that the URL for this GPT is available in the video description below. I know it didn't quite work out how we wanted, but give it a try. See if it works for you. I will continue to play with it and try to perfect it so that it is giving better information and it's prompting you better on what information it needs. I highly encourage you to give it a try and witness the magic it brings in helping you to build your book Bible. So why stop there? If you're feeling inspired, I challenge you to embark on your own adventure. Con consider creating a GPT for yourself, specifically tailored to your book or series. And the possibilities are endless. And I'd love to see what innovative tools that you come up with. If you found this video helpful and enjoyed our journey into AI-assisted writing, please hit the like button and subscribe to Bite Size Booksmith for more content where technology meets creativity. And your support means the world to me. And it helps our channel grow. And now I'm curious, is this your first time seeing a GPT, working with a GPT? Or have you gone out there and created a GPT yet? If you have created a GPT, what was your experience like? And if you haven't, what kind of GPT would you dream of making? So I'd love for you to share your thoughts and your ideas in the comments below. I do read every single one and I can't wait to hear about your experiences and your ideas. So thank you so much for joining me today. Keep writing, keep creating, and I'll see you in the next video.